Okay guys, in this video I want to talk about guns, safes, and security. And I want to talk about realistic things that can happen to the security that you have or that you think you have in your home. Okay, first I want to start off with talking about us gun guys on YouTube that do videos. Now, we take a higher risk than just your normal average shooter, gun collector, and guys like that, uh, just for the fact that we do videos. If you do videos on YouTube, you can be found. Your name, your address, all your info, trust me, you can be found. Kind of cracks me up when I see guys that do videos and they put paper and stickers and different things over their license plates on their cars and cover, cover up their gun serial numbers and things. I, I'm not a computer hacker and I don't know how to do any of this stuff. But I have been sent messages from anonymous accounts that had people's addresses and info and all that and with doing some cross-checking I come to find out they were 100% right. I have no idea how some of these guys do it but if you're on YouTube trust me I guarantee you you can be found or your your information can be found I should say. Now do I think that's a real high risk? No. Most times people's name and information get put out there. It's to taunt the person that they are going after. It plays with your mind. People don't like to see their name and their information out on the internet. It, it just kind of, it more plays tricks with their mind than anything else. Um, chances of something happening with that are very slim. You know, we have people from all over the country watching videos and even all over the world. So it would take a lot, even if someone has your address and name, if they want to do something, uh, a lot of times for them to even get to you because it's probably in another state or something such as that. Now, with that being said, there are professional criminals out there. I'm talking about organized pros. There's a lot more than just street crooks and junkies that rob and do crime. There are some people out there that are true professionals, just like there's true professional hitmen. That's not just a movie thing. There are hitmen out there that are paid and trained and do their jobs, and some of these guys do their jobs very well. I don't want to branch off too far into other things, but in a little bit in this video, I am going to tell you the easiest way to get into a safe that the criminals practice. Uh, it doesn't matter if your safe has 52 inch solid steel walls and it doesn't matter what kind of locks they have on it. There are ways that are very much easier than you might think to get into that safe and I'm going to go into that in a little while. Uh, normally these professional criminals are going after big scores. Uh, these guys do not do jobs that pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars. They're not going to come to your home because you have ten handguns in a safe. These guys are only going for the big scores. So, a lot of us guys on here wouldn't even have to really worry about that because um, they want the big stuff, the big items, high ticket, high dollar stuff, probably two hundred thousand dollars and up. And probably two hundred thousand dollars would be on the on the low end of the job scale. Now there are a lot of other things that criminals go for as well. It's not just guns. Guns are always going to be uh, a hot commodity with criminals. Uh, ability to to turn guns and make quick money, fast money. Guns hold value like that. And um, some guys on the streets, you know, actually sell guns for more than what they cost in the store. But there's other things also as well. There's jewelry, gold, silver, watches, like Rolex watches. On the thing with the jewelry, um, <laughs> I don't care and I, for diamonds, and I try to talk people out of buying high-priced high, uh, diamonds when they're getting married or whatever. Um, there is such a high markup on diamonds and places like pawn shops and things will only pay you pennies on the dollar 
for diamonds. So if a criminal goes after diamonds, it's normally going to be a big score of uncut diamonds that he can get to somebody that will then cut the diamonds and you know do what they want uh, with the diamonds. Gold and silver is a very, very hot commodity. Gold and silver can be used as currency, not at a Walmart, but uh, through private transactions and different things. It's as good as money. Uh, diamonds, I know for a fact, and dealing with some very high up people in the jewelry business, and this is nothing illegal whatsoever, but in dealing with some people high up in the jewelry business, uh, I know for a fact that jewelry has a 300% markup, especially diamonds. So when you get your wife that big ring, I guess the sentimental value of that ring is probably the biggest part of the ring. Let me give you an example. If I have a $1,500 gun and you told me you wanted to give me a ring that you paid four thousand dollars for with a diamond in it straight up trade for my fifteen hundred dollar gun I would in no way whatsoever do that trade I wouldn't even think about it that it's it's worth pennies on the dollar if you offered me two thousand dollars in silver bars for my fifteen hundred dollar gun I would jump on that all day long Okay, diamonds are not used as currency. Uh, gold and silver can be used as currency, and they're much more. They're worth a lot, much more than a diamond. My advice to you is, if you're going to go buy your your wife or your girlfriend a fancy diamond ring for a few thousand dollars, my advice is get her a cubic zirconia and buy her three thousand dollars in silver bars, and you'd be a lot further ahead. Things such as Rolex watches and high-end watches like that. Yes, very hot. Hold a high, high dollar resale value on the used market. If you know the right people to get these things to, you are going to get a high amount of money uh, from those type of items, such as uh, especially Rolexes. Those those would be something that would that would bring you high dollar. You know, if you got one of those, you're going to get some good money out of it. Now, back to what I was speaking to. Uh, a little earlier about getting into a safe. Um, the best way to get into a safe is by holding a gun to the owner's head and telling him to open it. Even better than that, if he has a wife or he has children, holding his wife or his children at gunpoint and telling him to open the safe. Now this what I'm telling you is nothing new. These are techniques that criminals have used for years going back, I don't know, probably a hundred years or more. But this is just some real talk on what can happen. If you have a gun to your head or your wife or one of your children's head, you would be surprised what a man will do in that situation. He will do anything, he will give and do anything that he can to get his family into safety. Now, the person has to get to you first to hold the gun to your head to get you to open your safe. And the question is, is will he be able to do that? Because you're probably going to be armed, you're probably going to have a gun by you, but you know, you have to sleep sometime. And I'm not making this video to scare anybody or to make anybody worry. I'm just giving you my thoughts and some real talk on this whole situation. These guys that are professionals, they can get to you. <laughs> you might just, if I don't care if you have ten guns around your bedside. If you sleep, these guys know how to get into houses, bypass alarms, and the next thing you know, you'll probably, you'll probably just wake up and there will be a gun right in your face. There's, at that point, I don't care if you have ten rifles and fourteen handguns right around you. You're, you're not going to touch one of them in that situation. Um, they could get you while you're out somewhere, while you're leaving a store in a parking lot, ride with you to your house while you're still held at gunpoint. You go into your house, you can't get to anything, they take you to the safe, they make you open the safe. 
Uh, that's probably one of the easiest, most common ways that a professional crook would do this. Now, street crooks and junkies uh, are more than likely going to break in when you're not home. They're probably going to pry around on the safe a little bit and see real fast that they're not going to get into the safe and they're going to hit the road and grab what they're going to grab what they can in the house and hit the road because they're not going to be able to get into the safe. Uh, those are just mainly the ones that hit you when when no one's at home. You know, I don't keep my collection of guns with me, but the same thing that I'm telling you about applies to me as well. I keep them mm, probably, I would say, about 10000 only thing I have with me in my house, I would say, is probably $10,000 worth of guns. My collection is somewhere else, but I could be out walking Jade, I could be at a store. If somebody really wanted bad enough to get to my stuff, they could just simply come up, put a gun in my back. We get in the vehicle, and they're going to say, take me to where, take me to where your guns are. Same rule applies even for that. So there is no 100% foolproof way to keep your things or to store your guns. Nothing is 100%. Do I think you should have a safe? Yes, by all means. Because any time that you're not at home, uh, you aren't going to have to worry about someone getting into your safe. Bolt, bolt it down to the floor, and it'll be secure. Uh, like I said, the probability of a professional... What these and these guys usually have um, a team of guys, but of professional thieves uh, hitting any of us gun guys is probably pretty low. You, unless you're worth, you would have to be worth a lot of money and have a lot of other things besides just guns for them to determine that they want to seek you out and come and get what you got. Because, like I said before, these guys are only going for the high paycheck. They don't want to come get $10,000 worth of guns off me. To them, that's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. They may spend ten grand preparing for a crime. So, that's a drop in the bucket. They could come get me, take me to my, to my main collection. I just don't think that's going to happen. They're more looking for large sums of cash, um, large amounts of jewelry like Rolexes, different things like that. Um, Cars, not so much. Uh, a lot of these guys that, that, that do this type of crime, um, burglary and stuff, it's not really the car thing with them. There are guys that just do nothing but steal cars. But for the, but for the guys that, uh, that are pros and want to make big money on robberies, they're not into the car scene, you know, unless it's something really rare, uh, you know, worth tons of money. Now, just in general, one of the best things you can have in your house for safety and security is a dog. It doesn't have to be a pit bull. It doesn't have to be a Rottweiler. Any dog that will alert you is a good thing because that dog will hear things before you do at night and it will smell things. Uh, I know there's times in the summertime one of my dogs will be will have their nose buried at the crack of the front door at the bottom and I'll look out and I'll see someone that had not made no noise and was across the street or in the middle of the street and they had just walked by the dogs smelled that the the dogs hearing and sense of smell is way beyond what us humans have and anything that goes bump in the night, the dog is going to hear it way before we do. And they're going to, the dog is what normally is going to alert me if something happens. Now, does it help to have a pit bull or a Rottweiler? Yes. A small dog, if somebody's just kicking your door in, they can be, uh, take, they can be defeated pretty easily. You got something like Goro, a 100-pound pit, not as easy, but can he be taken out? Yes. You know, they could just shoot him or whatever they want to do. But it's more of a deterrent. If people are going to hit you or rob you, normally they're going to stake you out and see what the routine is, stake out the house and see what's going on. Having big dogs like I do is a big turnoff to thieves. 
They just don't want to mess with it. They don't want to deal with it, especially if I'm not home. Uh, you know, you come into a house with two pit bulls and nobody's there, you still have to contend with the dogs. And what I've noticed out a lot of times is people are very scared of dogs. Um, I don't care if it's late at night and you're out walking and you see somebody that looks like they're up to no good. The one thing I always know is they don't want nothing to do with you when they see that dog. They cross the street, they walk the other way. They don't even want to look over in your direction when I'm walking like Goro outside. So, having a dog is always something that I recommend. It doesn't have to be a pit. It doesn't have to be a Rottweiler. It can be a Lab. Any good sized dog, most people have a natural fear of if they don't know the dog, most commonly, unless, unless somebody's really into dogs and they're a dog person. Uh, a medium to a big sized dog of any breed is going to uh, put a person in some fear just because they just don't know. Well, you know. Will the dog just bite me? You know, what's going to happen? A lot of people have that natural fear of dogs. I guess in conclusion what, I, what I'll say is just keep everything as secure as you can. Try to keep everything locked up and nine times out of ten most of the people watching this video do not have the kind of things that's going to attract a professional team of criminals to come after them. So you are basically going to be trying to keep your goods away from someone that might break in that doesn't want anyone to be there. A professional wants you to be there and knows you'll be there when he breaks in because he's going to use you to get what he wants out of your safe and whatever else you have. A regular street crook, he wants to stake out the place and make 100% sure that no one's there. So if you keep everything locked up, you get a good, decent safe. Uh, you don't have to spend three grand. You can get them. Just get the best safe that you can afford. That way you're at the best ability to deter common street criminals. You see, uh, when you're a gun guy, what happens is a lot of people end up knowing that we're gun guys and what we have. People we work with, friends that we have, uh, fr friends that tell their friends. You will never even believe how many times I meet someone that another friend of mine knows and they'll, as soon as they see me, they'll start talking about guns I have. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, what happens is, is people that you know are fascinated with your gun collection. And people that know me are fascinated with my gun collection. So what happens is, is they hang out with their friends or people they know, and they say, hey, you know, I know this guy, he's got all this, and he's got this kind of gun, and, and then these people when they meet you the first thing they want to do is bring up your guns and talk to you about guns so uh... and then like i said at work people talk at work at your place of employment so there's just so many ways that what we do is out there it's normally gun guys it's not a secret where they just know it and no one else does another thing i recommend is when you're going to go shooting or you're going to go to the range or hunting be discreet with your guns. Uh, don't carry them. If you're going to carry the guns in the boxes that come from the store, put it in bags, anything, trash bags, whatever, duffel bags, just so it doesn't look like you're carrying a gun to your neighbors. I also don't suggest, if you know your neighbors, telling them what you have or anything about guns. Maybe if you say you have a shotgun for home protection, that's okay. But I wouldn't go to your neighbors and start dragging your collection over to his house and saying, hey, look at this and look at that, when the guy lives right next door to you. Everybody's different. That's just me. Nobody around me knows anything about my guns. Now, do family and friends? Yes. Too much. <laughs>
but that's the best way to do it. Load your guns in the car when you're going to go shooting as discreetly as you can. Like I said, just carry on a trash bag. No one's going to think you got guns in a trash bag. Who's going to think that? They'll probably think it's either your laundry or some trash, you know? Nobody's going to think you got $3,000 worth of guns when you're carrying out a black trash bag and holding it up like, you know, holding it like it's just a bag of trash. Do whatever. It may sound silly, but do whatever you got to do to keep those guns dis discreet as you can around your house and property. And that's pretty much my only advice. A dog? Excellent. I love having the dogs here. Uh, uh, having a dog blows a security system out of the water for me. You've got a security system and a lot of people don't even know how these things work. And what happens is they all, I know for, I'm just speaking of one of the security companies, uh, what's going to happen is, is they're going to get an alert. There's just going to be some people sitting there. It doesn't go to the police station. They're going to get an alert that there was an alarm trip at your house. The first thing they're going to do is call you and make sure or tell you that there's an alarm tripped and there's just too much time involved in all that. A dog is instant. The dog always lets me know when anything's around, anything's going on, anybody pulls up. I never hear it. Sure enough, I go look out the window. Somebody pulled up down the street. Somebody just walked by. Seen Goro all the way chest deep up in the window. <laughs> So that's about it, guys. I will have another video coming soon. That video is going to be about protection inside the home. I'm going to give you a lot of... what well, I'm going to do some videos called Real Talk, like this one. This Real Talk about home defense is I'm going to tell you about different guns that people are saying they're using for home defense. And I'm going to give you Real Talk of what's going to happen and what can happen if you use certain guns in home defense situations. This isn't Hollywood. I keep I I don't know how many times I have to keep telling people that. This isn't Hollywood. Take everything you've ever seen in a movie and throw it out the window. And I'm not going to get into too much on that because that's going to be a separate video. But I'm going to break a lot of things down and it's going to make you think and help you to better prepare you and your family for what you want beside your bed uh, in, in the case that someone would break into your home. And I think it's going to be a real educational video, and I think it's something that will help a lot of you guys out. Until then, this is H4T. I'm getting ready to uh, get the frozen bottle out of the freezer with a 9mm bullet in it. I'm planning on going to the range soon. I'm going to test those rounds for you guys. And I'm out.